Okay, that's the new one. Just below it, you can see a wall with a little doorway to the right. Yes. Okay? So that is the back part of the house. The house is right in front of us. And where the blackish, or uh, where a little bit darker earth is, just, before, just in front of the terrace in front of us, that's where the ancient city walls are, are located. And the back room is touching the wall. So if I need, I can fill it up with earth and actually See, double, double wall. the width of double the wall. wall. That is the casemate wall. And this is common. We have it in Katsur, we have it in Megiddo. We have it maybe in one spot in Jerusalem of the time, but definitely we have it here quite well. Every last back room of a house is one of those rooms enhancing and widening the city walls. In the room in front of us, there are a few standing stones. In every portion of the housing discovered in the site, there's one special larger building that has a few interesting things in it. In a moment, we'll get into details. And if you want to see it in an aerial view, I'm sorry it's so small, but this is from one of the reports from about 12 years ago already. One of the reports of the excavation, you could see the gate that we just walked through yeah. and the casemate rooms on one side, the casemate room on the other side. Very, very well organized, enhancing on one side, on the other, enhancing and widening so the road. What? Huh? This is Kadmoniot, the uh, land of Israel, uh, uh, uh -huh. a journal for the antiquities of Eretz Israel, land of Israel and Bible lands. This is from uh, 12 years ago, <coughs> or, book does, at 141. How does it widen it? Meaning you use your back I, wall. I take the back room of the house, fill it up with oh, earth, okay. and actually doubling okay. the width of the wall. Then you lose a room. The, you, you lose a room, but, you but protect yourself, protect yourself, yourself to actually be able out. to get back to that room later on. What about this side? It has been protected Ooh, by interesting. The... Actually, what they discovered in the excavations here is that this city, and I'm calling it a city because it has a gate, it has walls, Modern age wasn't completed. Mm. Which means where you are and up, there was barely anything. Only a circle around the top of the hill was fortified and built. And that actually suggested to the archaeologists that this was a very short living site and they never completed building the center. But at the top of the hill where the tree is right there, there is the, uh, some building, half built maybe, maybe fully built, some large structure that all the rest was never connected to. And that's actually telling us that this lived for 20, 30, 40, maybe even less years in total. And carbon dating in, in olive seeds that were discovered here and they were carbon dated they discovered that this is from the end of the 11th and beginning of 10th century bce roughly and that's equivalent in the bible is the days of saul and david but when they talk about this site they talk only about david you know why because david is attested by a archaeological find discovered in tel dan we already heard of saul was never mentioned in any outside but biblical source so it's very hard to know anything archaeologically about the person. So they focus on David here, but theoretically speaking, it's Saul and David. Just beyond the trees in that direction, I'm not going to take you there because there's barely anything to see. They found a structure that's wider and larger than the homes here. That seems as if it has a row of pillars. And the beginning of another row of pillars that was never completed, apparently, or heavily damaged. And we've already seen structures like this in two locations. Katsu. And we'll see a third one next week. Katsu. Katsu. We weren't in Megiddo we were yet, we didn't see it. Be'er Sheva. In Be'er Sheva. Be in Sheva. both of them we saw what was identified as storehouses. Ah. Large rows of right. columns with small rooms, niches to the side. So we see the beginning of that thing apparently being built here, but apparently not completed. There's a city wasn't finished mm. and then it was deserted and then in the Persian period there's a small settlement here deserted Hellenistic period small settlement here and then little huts and little ruins from scattered periods but no construction no living long long time site that's interesting because we're used to the tells that continue for centuries and rebuilt and rebuilt here a little bit there a little bit here something very very minimal but what's special about this site is that we have such a nicely built and preserved gate that tells us of administrative needs. It tells us of some kingdom designing this place. This isn't just a little town in the middle of nowhere. 
it's above the valley and we'll need to continue with it shortly but before we do that i'm going to show you uh, just a few of the, the finds to it well, this place was too young they never got to a water system apparently. Good, yeah. apparently they never got to it or at least at the moment we don't have it. they didn't complete the city you said yes they they, yeah. they, they, they didn't finish the construction yeah. if they had yeah. if they had a plan we don't know <laughs> uh, quickly 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 through here we go in one of the rooms they discovered uh Thanks. A text here you see the centimeter scale so here you see five centimeters let's say this thing is close to the real size roughly whatever and here there's an inscription can you read it sure does it remind you of something we saw earlier this morning it's very similar to the gezer calendar in the letters used which means it's apparently parallel as i mentioned there we don't have so many inscriptions from that period and almost all of them are not from the big cities actually from the small spaces, Gezer is one exception actually. And here there's an inscription that the cool thing about it is we don't even know if to read it to right to left or left to right. We're used to writing Semitic languages from right to left. But who said that's how you do things? We're used to writing European languages from left to right. But who said that's the only way to do it? Actually in the ancient Greek, you know what they did? They wrote like this. And then? And then, <coughs> and then, like a snake. so when future, when archaeologists arrive and find this inscription, they find out that every second row made sense and all the other, every other row doesn't make sense. So they noticed, actually yeah, wrote it like this, which means till writing had a scheme and a direction, this takes time. And of course that makes every letter here being able to be read with this one or that one. This way or that, what almost everyone agrees in this inscription is that it mentions do not do, in Hebrew, al ta'as. Al don't do al something about alman or almana which is a widow something about shafat or shofet which is a judge or judging judgment so there's a religious moral Political court. judgment type of text written in a tiny city far away that didn't really become something uh, known and large so this they, is interesting they didn't translate I don't know. Oh, that there are a few options. It's very hard to really know. It's I'll just tell you. I'll just the importance is they managed to identify three, four words that do make sense, and that tells us of some even prophetic type of text. If we're looking at the prophets of the Bible, this is more like the Book of Deuteronomy and the prophets that are actually complaining about how people are uh, deceiving and cheating and not judgmental and, and not being, uh, let's say, righteous in judgment. So this is something like that. Another inscription discovered, found on the rim of a big open uh, uh, storage jug. You can see it here. It was found shattered to pieces and they managed to assemble it. Mentioning the name Eshbaal ben Beda. Eshbaal, the son of Beda. Mm -hmm. And Eshbaal, Ish Baal. Baal is the Canaanite god of the fertility. Wife of Baal. Ish, Ish is the person of. Uh, Ish is the. And Saul, one of his sons' names was Ish Boshet. Boshet is a, a busha. It's it's a shameful. Shameless. Shameless. And because the name Baal is a name of a god, many people looked at that as shameful, so they nicknamed the person Ish Boshet, the 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 person yeah. that is shameful for being named after a pagan the god so actually discovering this name here even though it's not Ishbal ben Shaul it's not the son of Saul it's a ben Beda but that specific name that also exists in the book of Samuel connected to the days of King Saul even strengthened more the identification of this place as something connected to the mountain people which means the Israelites and not the Philistines, the Philistines. but you want me to make it complicated because I love life like that yes. back to this thing for a moment Maybe, and it's a very, very small picture, but maybe you'd identify this specific jug. This is the Philistine beer jug. We've seen it in the Philistine Museum. I know it was a few months ago already. So there's also Philistine wor pottery here. What a mess. So who dwells in this place? What is the ancient name of this place? 
trade, I agree, but there's something interesting here because the name Kayafa makes no sense. No one knows easily what this place was named in antiquity, but to give an option, we need to move.